All right, this is great. Um, so this is uh, the Hebrew course, and we are using a curriculum called Read It in Hebrew, developed a few years ago, and it is fantastic. It is wonderful for teaching um, Hebrew reading, hence the name Read It in Hebrew. So th th this is yours. This is very important for the purposes of the course. Okay, so this is yours. It's hermetically sealed. So you pop it open. No, you got, uh, that's an extra one. Oh, are we? Sorry. Look at you. So generous, Daryl. All right. So open up, crack open your um, Read in Hebrew book um, cards. This is your curriculum. In other words, your curriculum materials will be this, uh, th these cards. And um, there are a total of, how many do we have here? We have... 69 69 cards over here <laughs> 69 cards and each one represents a letter vowel or word or word combination and as this course goes on this gets progressively more intriguing and when i say intriguing i mean it gets more complex uh, <laughs> i think i got a i think i got a good hand <laughs> we could turn this into the poker of hebrew reading um, I, I will say this, and I feel very strongly about the following. Um, I've been asked a lot about the Hebrew reading course, this course, the Hebrew course, like, well, I know how to read. I kind of know how to read, sort of know how to read. Um, is this for me, et cetera? Here's, here's who this course is for. This course is for someone who, who has never learned how to read Hebrew, as well as someone who has learned how to read Hebrew, but can use extra speed, fluency, and accuracy. Here's the deal. Here's my analogy. I think it's a pretty solid analogy. Imagine Michael Jordan in his prime. What do you think he was doing every single day? He was shooting shots, free throws. He doesn't know how to shoot a free throw. What do you mean? It's about repetition and mechanics, which means even if you learned Amol, in Yiddish means, that's Yiddish for once upon a time, how to read, but practicing the fundamentals, going back to the basics, revisiting, learning, making sure it's accurate. I know a lot is, 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 is key. Even I say even in schools, and my wife is uh, is the principal of the Chabad Day School on Roswell, and she sees this consistently. Kids learn how to read Hebrew, you know, in the first or second grade, whenever they learn it, and then a few years in, it's a little, it's not so they're not so fluent. Maybe they know the prayers because they know it by heart or whatever. But it's it's there, there's and so there, now there's an effort of always going back to fundamentals. Sometimes parents will say, "Oh, my kid already knows this." Michael Jordan is still shooting foul shots he knows how to shoot them he's made a lot of them it's it's not it's so this course is about going back to the beginning getting everything solid and then advancing very soon this will get pretty pretty complex if you look toward the end of your cards you will see for example this a card like this this is 62 um you'll see a card right you'll see cards that have a lot of words 59 has a lot and these are words that will find that will be found throughout this is the prayer book throughout the Chumash, you know, the, the, the Hebrew, the Hebrew Torah. And you will find these words. And the only way to guarantee or to help make sure that when you encounter these words, it, it, it rolls off the tongue. You can read it quickly is by making sure that, that the fundamentals are there. When I say fundamentals, I'll tell you what I mean. There's two fundamentals when it comes to Hebrew reading. And it's very simple. Letters and vowels. It's not easy. It's simple. Two basic points. You got to know the letters cold and the vowels cold, and then you can combine them. And if you have enough repetition, it's fluent. But if when we look at a word, we're not sure if that's a resh or a dalit or a bet or a chaf, that's when things get a little bit complicated. So it's about going back to the fundamentals, which I've said now a bunch of times. So with that in mind, the way you you should use this, these cards, is either, you have two options, either do the cycle through the back or the flip to the side. I'll let you decide your favorite method. Um, I'm more of a flip to the side type of guy, just because I feel like that is a better guarantee. So top card is read it in Hebrew. We got that. Okay, so we're going to go through now. And by the way, everything that's in the, your cards will be also put up here on the on the big screen. We'll go through some of these together. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, right to left. Yeah, I was once driving. I was going 53. Cop pulls me over. He says, Spilum 35. Can't you read the sign? I'm like, absolutely, right to left, baby. Kidding, never happened. 
never happened but you know as a, <laughs> yeah <laughs> well just don't quote me on that all right so here the first slide we have the first real slide which is card two in your card packets has the entire hebrew alphabet known as the aleph bet sounds kind of the same right alphabet aleph bet sounds very much the same this is the hebrew alphabet uh, you would imagine now this had there in hebrew there are 22 primary letters if you count these letters you will find more than 22 very simple reason in this chart of letters which is the typical chart you will find certain letters that repeat themselves twice um, or more than twice there are some letters that have variations as well as some final letters which we'll talk about very very soon so just know that there are 22 primary hebrew letters but there's more than 22 on this list let's read these together let's just read you know this is the neck this is the flip side 2a 2b on your cards so again you can use these cards uh, by the way, I'm going to interrupt myself just before we really get started but with reading. There is an app. The app is called Read It in Hebrew. You don't, don't, you don't have to download it now, but after the class, trust me, it's worthwhile. Every letter, every card is represented, every vowel. You click on it, and someone speaks it, and it's, it's a machaya, as they say. It's a pleasure to use. So highly recommended Read It in Hebrew. I, I didn't publish the app, so it is $1.99. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. So, okay. Now, I, I would have loved to give away licenses. I can't, but that's uh, that's that's this this right here. So we're going to start with the top right and let's just read it together. Again, you may know this. This may seem whatever, like the, like the basic, but it's important to, to, to get back to the fundamentals and then to move from there. First letter on the top right is Aleph, Bet, Vet, Gimel. No. Dalit, hey, vav, Zion, it's hard to read. Zion, chet, tet, yud, kaf, chaf, final chaf, lamed, mem, final mem, nun, final nun, so it goes on, samach, ayin, pei, fe, final fe, tzadik, final tzadik, kuf, reish, Shin, sin, tough, suf. Now, there's a lot of letters here. For example, the letter pay. I'm going to stand up for a quick second. The letter pay has three variations. As I remember, I was going to ask you before to find the letters, but there's more on this list. So, this is pay. A variation is pay, and another variation is final pay. This letter itself has three versions, as does cup. There's cup, cup, and final cup. So here are here are letters that have multiple forms. We will go through all of this step by step, but this is the overall chart. If you know this, you are you're golden. And then it's just the vowels and then blending it together. Okay, so we're going to go through this one by one. I'm going to give you mnemonics, i.e. Um, visuals that you can use to remember this. We're going to be teaching Hebrew, the, the Hebrew letters, in, I think, a unique way. And the first letter that we encounter, of course, is the Aleph. Okay, now with the Aleph, um, if, if you ask many people what sound does Aleph make, often they will say, ah. However, in truth, the letter Aleph does not actually make a sound, which means, which means the letter Aleph will take on the sound of the vowel, which we have not, which we are not getting to yet. But just know that the Aleph is a silent letter. The first letter is silent. It's kind of interesting, right? The first letter in communication, right? The first lesson in communication is silence. Listening maybe, I don't know, but the, it's interesting. The first letter is silent. Aleph is silent. It has no sound of its own, okay? So that is card 3A, the back of card 3A, 3B, right? Aleph is silent. It has no sound of its own. Again, what you see here on the board, on, on the screen you have on your card, okay? That is Aleph. One other thing to remember about Aleph, and this might be a mnemonic, if you look at the, the shape of the Aleph, it kind of looks like an X, does it? If you squint and say a few lechaims and shake your head around, maybe it looks where you see what I mean? It has like two lines and a line in the bread, kind of like an X. Elon Musk is suing because apparently we're using his logo, his, no, joking. Anyway, so the Aleph, if you think of it as X, like, like silent, silent letter, has no sound, it will take on the sound of the vowel, which again, we have not gotten to yet. 
Um, one other interesting point of note is that there are different forms that Aleph can take, um, which we will get to in a second. Here's a Hasidic interpretation, a mystical idea of the Aleph and the representation. There's a Yud, which represents God. There's a, a Yud down, uh, there's like a little, a little letter, which is the Yud, which we haven't talked about yet, but a little letter on top, a little letter on the bottom, God and us, and in the middle, there's a line of faith that, that connects us with God. So again, different imagery that you can associate with the letter Aleph, uh, um, a way to remember it, a memory trick, like the X that I told you, and here's a meditation, a spiritual meditation about the letter. There are different forms that you will find the letter Aleph written in different fonts and handwriting. The first, um, the one, i.e. the one on the right, that is the way it will typically appear in the Torah text and the printed and, and written text of Torah and of Jewish books like the Siddur, like the prayer book. Formal printing is that. The next letter, the next version of that, you see looks a little bit different. And that is um, just another font that you might find on the computer or in a newspaper. You might find that again, that is the same letter as the letter Aleph. Then again, you have the way it's written in the Torah scroll. And then you have the um, the cursive letter. That, yes, exactly. So when we... The last one is when like kids or whatever, people are learning hand, like handwriting, even adults, the way you write by hand is that it's just, I guess it's a little too hard to draw the three components. So here you just go, boom, boom. And honestly, that looks like IC or CI and I, it looks like a K exactly. Second one. Yeah. But it's just a little bit more complicated. Three strokes instead of like nice at two. All right. But anyway, all of this is Aleph. Aleph makes no sound. So now, if yeah. Write the sentence, would you use the cursive? Absolutely. If I was writing, 100%. Yeah. By the way, there are people that write it. There are people who write the Aleph, even in like handwriting. They'll go, that's going to be hard to like air draw it. But I do air guitar. So you go like, it's boom and boom. Like they will do it in one motion. Try to get like the three boom, boom, boom. But most, most people are learning it like that. The, the point of this slide is not necessarily that we're all going to practice with these different uh, permutations and, and, and options. It's more just to know when it's out there, what it might look like out in the wild. Now, we're going to move on. Aleph is Aleph. We got it. That's the letter that looks boom, boom, boom. Right? First letter of the alphabet. No sound. Got it. Next letter is, help me out here. Yeah. Bet. Now, before we continue, very important. You will find different people pronouncing this letter different ways. We are sticking with the Israeli, the modern Hebrew Israeli uh, form, which is more Svardi, as opposed to the Ashkenazi. The Ashkenazi way to say it, the way I grew up is Bez. Bez. But I'm not going to confuse everybody. And the most prevalent way to, to do this in, in Israel and modern. So if you go to Israel and you're having a conversation with an Israeli, or you go to, I don't know, Pita Palace, no, it used to be Pita Palace, Togo Group, whatever. Go to Nor. If you go to an Israeli place, right? This is bet. You bet that this is bet. Okay, this is the letter bet. It's the second letter. So we're gonna go with the with the with the. So we're gonna go with one uh, that one angle with this series, and this is now henceforth known as bet. And uh, that's as you can see it right there. And this is card number four, bet. Now the other, there's two versions of this letter. Bet and vet. Now, you might be wondering why some letters have two versions and some letters have one version. So I don't have a philosophical answer for that. But typically, when it has a dot, the dot makes a harsher sound. Okay, so b versus v, it approximately comes from the same place in the mouth, approximately. One is a harder sound. One is an easier sound. The dot gives it a dagesh, gives it a little emphasis. So bet, vet. Okay. But how, do you, how are you going to remember this in real time? Here's what I like to suggest. Okay. Bet has a button. Aha. Uh -huh. Or has a ball. There's a little button or ball in the middle. No, in the middle. In the middle. There's no word. In the middle of bet, it has a button. That is vacant or has a void. The, right? Bet has the button. Vet is vacant. The style of this, I told, I try to explain before we started the style of learning here. This part of the style is giving some image associations with the letters, which will then hopefully create uh, pathways of easier recall. Bet and vet. 
Now, very important as you go along over here, and this is not in one of the cards, but this is just a, I would call this a heads up slide. You will find very often in the Hebrew alphabet that there are letters that we might call look alike letters. How similar are all four of these letters? Pretty similar. In fact, you can pair up the first of each set to end the second of each set together, and they look almost identical with some key differences. Um, there's a bird. Okay, key differences. You have the if you look at the shape, the top is similar, mm -hmm. although those letters which we haven't mentioned yet, those letters are going in a little bit. This is more straight, but the key way that you're going to differentiate this in real time is the base of the bottom of the vent is bolder. It goes longer. It's like a boat. If a boat looked like that, it would, be, it would look like a boat, right? This is going longer where this is, I'll tell you right now, this letter is a cuff. This is curved and this is straight down the bottom. It's curved. Bet, right, goes beyond the line. And I just B words, you know, just try to, try to get that um, uh, association. So this is bet and bet. This is cuff. And come in Hebrew reading, it's very easy to make a mistake, especially if you're looking at a small prayer book, a small Torah scroll. You know, you see it quickly, whatever. It's, it's sometimes hard to differentiate. The more you practice this and, and, and know what to look for, the easier that recall is going to be. Make sense? That's just by way of, uh, of, of heads up. Okay. Um, next. Next slide, again, you don't have this in the cards, but just another heads up. The Torah, the Bible, the Torah begins with the letter bet. Now you're probably thinking, I don't see the dot. That is because a Torah scroll does not have any vowels, including any dots in any letters. Um, so how do you know that's which I'm reading, or how do you know if it's a bet or a vet? When you, when you know, you know. It's kind of like when you know, you know, how do we know any of the vowels? It's you just that we have a tradition that that's how it's read. In fact, the Talmud tells a story of somebody who comes to a rabbi once and says, I don't believe in the oral tradition. He says, uh, I don't believe in the rabbinic tradition. I only what's written. So he says, how do you know how to read? <laughs> how would you know how to read if not for an oral tradition? Like you, how do you know it's bereshit, not vereshit? How do you know the word is Moshe and not Misa, which means from a sheep? How do you know any of the words, what they mean? It's from a tradition. So we're all basing this on tradition, but that's just a heads up. The first letter is the letter bet. Something about bet is about always the opening is forward, always looking forward. And the first letter of Torah is almost like a bookend pu pu pushing us into the direction of, creation and the narrative of history all right moving on to letter number three we're going to do five letters kind of five letters at a time and then pause for a little bit and just regroup all right so the third letter that we have is the letter gimel okay this is uh, card number five gimel and one way to remember this is that gimel is glamorous and you're probably thinking why is this glamorous what are we even talking about well oh. gimel is wearing high-heeled Galoshes, I mean shoes, or not? High, glet, yes, suit. Oh, yes. How how did we miss that on the slide? It's got the right. That's super fancy. That's like next level fancy. So super glam. But again, if you want to, when you look at this letter, look for the heel. Look for that heel. Why do I say this? There's another letter that's identical. All it's missing is the heel part. You'll see what I mean. Um, that letter to the left <laughs> is a flat or it's the letter nun, i.e. there's none, it, there's no heel on that one. So gimel is gimel on, on the right side is gimel and the other side is nun. But remember, gimel has the glamorous heel. Gla literally on the card, glamorous gimel has a high heel and a little loop-de-loop -loop there at the top as well. Soup strap at the top as well. Super fancy. All right, Gimel is also, I'm giving you more things to associate with it. Gimel is also related. That's how you spell Gimel in Hebrew. Gimel is also related to the word Gomel, which means to give. Also a G word, G, right? Gimel, Gomel means to give. It's a benefactor. It's a, someone who's giving to someone else. And you see also the Talmud says, 
Now, what's the lesson of the shape of the gimel? Gimel is a reference to giving. It means just like the gimel om could, well, we said it looks like a hill, but it could also look like somebody running. It says that we should always be looking for someone to give to, not waiting for someone to ask, but 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 um, proactively looking to give. This guy in the picture, I guess we can say he's looking to give. Hopefully he's not escaping some danger. He's, he uh, uh, looks like a spy. Kidding. Um Right, he looks like a guy, right? Didn't it show that um, for the soccer thing, he looks like the, the other coach? Uh, Are you talking about the on Apple? Oh, Ted Lasso? Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen it. I've, I've, I've heard good things. I've heard only good things. <laughs> that, oh, maybe it's him. No, 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 I think he looks like the other coach. You know, with the Apparently, everyone in Ted Lasso looks like the, the Hebrew yeah. course. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have so far. Well, we're going to recap soon. Let's let's move forward. Dalit. Now, Dalit is the next letter, and we need some mnemonics. Or how are we going to remember this? Dalit also has a lookalike letter. By the way, so far, Bet is a lookalike letter. Has a letter that looks like it. That could be confusing. Um, Gimel looks like the look. Uh, Bet. Gimel looks like the Nun, right? It has no heel. Now, Dalit also has a lookalike letter, which we'll talk about soon. But first. The dalit is like a hammer that can dent things. Think about this. Hammer, boom. Or tomahawk chop. Ooh, no, I don't know if that's, maybe that's not PC. But anyway, dalit is like a hammer dent. Think of dalit. Also, I will say, forget denting. Think the dalit itself has a dent. Look at the top and look at, this, look at the base. Right, The top is at the top and then the base, but there's a dent, which is going to be very important as we get to look like whatever. The dent is creating a space between that top and that stick, as opposed to, oh, there's the hammer. Oh, that's not bad, actually. Hammer looks, hammer's going the other way. They should have flipped it. Ah, oh, slides. All right, however, um, oh, and one more thing, Gimel, right? The letter Gimel, is, I told you, is the benefactor. The Dalid, the Gomel, the giver. Dalid is related to the word Dal, which means destitute. Uh, kind of the person who's bent forward and is receiving. Also, the Talmud, by the way, all this is the Talmud. The Talmud actually gives these images with the with the letters. The Talmud says that the, the receiver, the person who is in a, in, a, in, a, in a tough spot, will oftentimes look away from the person who is giving because they feel embarrassed to take. So this is the idea that the person who's giving is, is, move, is looking forward. The other guy is also looking away from him. So again, Gimel, Dalid, just... I'm throwing anything and everything out there so that you'll have some associations as you encounter these letters. Um, Dalit's lookalike letter is the Reish. You know, we're not learning the Reish right now, but just so you know, that is its lookalike. That's its um, its evil twin, not evil twin. That's its twin letter, similar letter. But as you notice, the Reish, oh, as you notice, the Reish is rounded, rounded, rounded Reish. The Dalit has a dent, right? Remember, I told you Dalit has a dent. In notation, Reish is rounded. Um, this is one of the most often, in my experience, confused letters, Dal and Reish. Again, hard to sometimes differentiate on the fly, but the more practice. That was too. Uh, final Chaf, yeah, yeah, but that will go beneath the line. Good point. The final Chaf does look like a Dal and on top, but the line goes, it's like, um, what English letters would go be uh, below the line? Do, do English letters go? J. J, Q, Y. Oh, good. Okay, so I'm, in, I'm in Hebrew mode. Yeah, so if you were drawing like a medium-sized letter and most letters are fitting between two lines, this would go, the final letter would go between. By the way, just a general note about final letters. I was going to mention this later, but I'll mention it now. Final letters typically are like posts, like saying the word ends here. Okay. So it'll typically be a longer, typically, not, not all this, but it'll be, typically be a longer letter in stature. Yes. Okay. Yes, only certain letters at the end have a modification. Well, most of them are below, say, final. Yes, correct, right, when it's a final letter, exactly. Okay, next, uh, already did that. Oh, all right, we are up to the fifth letter, the letter H. Um, okay, this letter has a hole. Hey, good to see you. So this, hey, oh, look at that. Hey has... <laughs> A hole in the top. Instead of being like a like a perfect, I don't know, staple form, it's there's a uh, there's a, there's a breach. Hey, 
Um, in this in this uh, perspective, hay is like a breath of air. Hey, his foot is broken. I don't know. Yeah, mm, I don't know. That's that seems like a bit of a stretch. But the hay is definitely has that opening. Um, the the Talmud says that the lesson of the hay is there's always a way out. There's always uh, an escape hatch, right? There's always uh, if you feel stuck, there's always usually a, sol a solution somehow to get out of the situation. It says, right, right. Oh, 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 I like that. I like that. But now we're getting to numerology. So we're going to, although numerology is actually going to come up tonight, but I like that one, right? Dalit four plus one is, 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 hey, a little one on the side. All right. So this is the letter hey. Hey has a hole in the side. I know hole spelled W H. I'm, I'm, I know. No, no, sorry. Hole is no H. Look at that. I don't know, apparently. H O L E is the hole that I'm speaking of, right? Not hole, but a hole, a, right? A gap. And this has the hay has a hole in it for space to escape. All right. So, in review, this is not a card, this is a review slide. Okay, in review, we cover all together now. Good. Excellent. Good. 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 All right. Aleph, bet, vet, right? Bet and vet. One has a ball or a button. One doesn't. Has a void. Kimmel, glamorous. Dalid, the dent, the hammer, right? And hay has the hole. Aleph, bet, vet, gimel, dalid, hay. Okay, great. And remember, you have the cards. There is no guesswork with this course. You have all the materials you need. All right, moving on with the sixth letter. Now, it's more than six, but it's the sixth full letter, which is the letter Vav. Okay, Vav is an important letter on many different levels. Vav is the mnemonic here that we're learning, the word association and image association. Very straight, very thin. It's that V sound. Now, you might be thinking, well, one second, the V sound we already have with the vet, right? Olive bet, vet, vet makes a V sound. And the Vav also we're saying now makes a, like a V sound. And the answer is, uh, if that is a question, the answer is yes, that is correct. Both make the same sound. But grammatically, they just serve different purposes and will be used in different contexts. But essentially, when you're pronouncing it, both will make the V sound. Neither one of them are just triangles. They could both be within the context. Correct. One could be, yeah, it could be beginning, middle, or end of the word. Does not make a difference. It is all good. It's all, uh, it, wherever it is, it will make that sound. Uh, there are certain exceptions to this one, but we're not, that's, that's high, uh, high end, not high end. That's like later, it's going to come later. By the way, it's great that you're mentioning English, English because when I've been, I, when I've had the opportunity to teach my kids how to read for the first time, every time I teach them a rule, I'm like, oh, let's practice. English is Meshuggah. English is crazy. It's almost like every word is an exception. When you're reading a kid's book to kids, or the kids try to learn how to read. It, I'm telling you, it's almost every other word. It's like, well, okay, but that word is different because Hebrew is pretty straightforward. It's it's much more straightforward than English. English has a, so many more exceptions. Hebrew, yeah, it's phonetic. It's just letters and the vowels, which we'll get to. But if you know this, you're off to the races. All right, Vav. Again, very straight, very thin. I'm, I know what you're thinking. How straight is it? It's got a little thing at the top. Okay, but once it goes down, it's straight. Okay, now let's continue. Vav is likened to a hook, right? A hook joins two elements together. And the Vav is also a prefix used at the beginning of words that also connects things together. The, the meaning, when you find the Hebrew word beginning with the letter Vav, it means and, which is connecting, joining two things together. Like someone and someone, right? Let's say Ari and Daryl, you would say in Hebrew very loosely, but not probably wouldn't say like this, but you Ari 
the Daryl. You wouldn't have an extra word for and, it would just be a prefix, one letter prefix, which is always the vav. That's not by any means the only time that this letter is used, but just as an, again, a way of remembering things and hooking things together, vav is very straight. It also looks like a hook. It also is a letter that in, in language attaches things together and serves as the, that mean, at, to mean the word and. Now, the next letter after vav, and this is where you see the distinction, as opposed to Vav that's very straight, now we're on card number nine, the Zion is zigzaggy. Zion is of a zigzag shape. Now, I will say that not every font in Hebrew is easy to distinguish. Sometimes you'll look at a letter and you're like, is that straight or is it a little crooked or is the printing just a little smudged? I don't know if I can tell, but you did your best. The Zion, the top is a little slanted, and the actual base also goes in and out, as opposed to the Vav, straight top, very short, and then straight down. Okay, um, makes sense? Zion zigzaggy. Zion in Hebrew also means weaponry, mm -hmm. which, I don't know, that slide doesn't do it for me, because that slide, that sword is not zigzaggy. So, nice. so oh well, so much. So much for visual aids. This is a visual contradiction. But anyway, Zion actually literally does mean weaponry. In, in Hebrew, Kli Zion would mean armaments, like uh, ammunition and stuff. Um, our Zion, our ammunition to make the world a brighter place is Torah and mitzvot, lighting Shabbat candles. That's, that's how we illuminate the world. By the way, Zion, numerology, Zion is the seventh letter. If you exclude the double letters, I mentioned before 22 letters. If you exclude all the double, the doubles and triplicates, the duplicates and triplicates with the dots or no dots or final letters, not, you get 22 letters. The seventh letter is the letter Zion. And of course, the seventh day of the week is Shabbat. And that is how we bring light into the world. Shabbat candles and day of rest. That is how we um, transform the world into a holier place. Next letter. Uh, this is card number 10, is the letter Chet. Now, Chet is one of my favorite letters because you get to clear your throat every time you say it. Chet. Chet. Um, not one of the easier letters to pronounce, but it is what it is. So letter Chet, um, one way to think about this and to remember it, and I think the, the easiest, one of the easier ways is that it looks like a chuppah. What is a chuppah? Chuppah is a marriage canopy. And if you look... Uh, yeah, like probably the worst marriage canopy. I mean, not, not that that doesn't look nice, but just it's no, it's pretty, but it's just like it's there's a lot of detail that distracts from the thing. Anyway, chuppah, right? Think of it as the marriage canopy, two poles on the side, top, poles on the side again, boom, 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 right? So that is the letter chet. Um, it makes the ch sound like a chuppah, which in Hebrew means wedding canopy. And you have that literally on the card, uh, side 10b. Um, chet looks like a chuppah, a wedding canopy. Oh, interesting. Look at this one. Back to numerology. So there's seven days of the week, right? So what is eight? The number eight always represents in Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism, eight represents that which is beyond nature. If seven represents nature, like the natural weekly cycle, eight is miraculous or transcendent. And the point here, the, the insight here is that a chuppah, right? Ches, chuppah, marriage, a true marriage transcends nature and logic for it's based on a soul commitment, not something that's necessarily logical and uh, can be broken down philosophically. All right, Ches is eight and that shape. Eight represents that which is beyond nature, super rational and supernatural. Rational, supernatural. Infinity, yes. Excellent, right. Eight sideways is infinity. And I guess the idea here before about this, about this marriage, but any real deep relationship, it's not just based on logical considerations, but something beyond that as well. All right. Now, next. Oh, and I should also point out, look at like letters. Very important to distinguish the chet and the hey. Remember the hey? The hey has hey. <laughs> the, le the, the letter hey um, has the hole in the side, right? Remember? Um, whereas, whereas, whereas the letter chet is like the chuppah and, um, sorry, no way out. No way out. Oh, <laughs> right. Only way out down. Um, no, I'm kidding. But right. So, so the chet is that closed space like a chuppah. So that is the mnemonic 
tool to uh, to recall that. Yeah, they were good. Uh, it comes and goes. Okay, now we are up to. Uh, <laughs> okay, so now we are up to the next letter. Now the next letter you can find it in on card eleven A. All right, so this is card eleven A. By the way, Jessica, I have everything. Everything's recorded, so you can pop right back. Okay. Yeah, text. Yeah. Text 11A, all right? Text 11A. Is this, is, um, oh, sorry, not, not text, card 11A is the letter TES or the letter TET, the way we're going to pronounce it in this, um, in this course. And this is shaped like a teapot, right? Sort of. Right, it actually looks like a teapot. You grab it on that side, the spout is on that side, boom, you got it. Um, so that is the letter tet. It makes a T sound, again, like a teapot. The idea here is, hey, the idea here is to associate the shapes of the letters with the sound that it is making. And here you have a baby. Why do we have a baby? We have a baby because... The letter tet is also the first letter of the word tov, which means good. And of course, right, a baby is, and it's also the ninth letter, numerology, nine months, uh, gestation for a baby to be born. And that is associated with blessing. So all of these uh, ideas conspire together, you know, together combine us, hopefully to remember that shape and that letter. Now, if you look at this is also one of those uh, Hebrew Oh, I'm not going to say nightmare. I just said it. But it, it, it made, it's a point of confusion. Why? Because these letters, seriously, right? They both kind of, now, if you do A, B, they look different. But good luck recalling it in the moment. Like, they pretty much look the same. Same stylistic. Like, they were drawn by the same artist who ran out of inspiration. She's kind of repeating herself for herself. So this letter is the letter Tet. This letter we have not learned yet. This is the letter, the letter men. So one way to think about this is to recall this is the letter tet. First of all, looks like a teapot. That I don't know what kind of. Uh, it's not exactly that, but the letter tet um, it has a tear at the top. Right again, something to think about as you a tear at the top. Whereas that letter on the left, the men looks like a mountain. Just, just. Just close your eyes and imagine a mountain. Um, anyway, but that is the tet and that is the mem. Again, two lookalike letters. That's where the repetition is going to come in to make sure that you have these letters clear. Um, which one? Oh, the monster. Could be. Yeah. 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 The fun thing about this uh, this way, this method of, of learning letters, trying to find picture associations, it's kind of like clouds. It's like, oh, there's a dragon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a cat, right? So wh whatever works for you, it's about like um, getting that association. Um, okay, so we are up to letter number 10, which is the smallest letter of the alphabet, of the Hebrew alphabet, which is the letter Yud. The letter Yud is one way to remember it, like a Yid. What's a Yid? A Yid is a Jew, just like the Jews are the small of all the major religions. The Jew, Jewish people are the smallest in number. So, to, and maybe in stature, I don't know, whatever. But um, height wise, Jews are usually kind of more compact, whatever. But I mean, I mean in number, or right, fewest in number. Uh, so, to the Yud is the smallest as well. It's the smallest letter. Um, it also alludes to God's name, who is one and transcends all limits. A Jew is small, a powerful like God's name. Beautiful. All right. So, now we have. The first 10 letters, and we are going to, let's start from the top, i.e. top right. Let's say the letters together. Aleph, Bet, Vet, Gimel, Dalid, Hey. Now, Vav. Remember, Vav is very straight. Zion is zigzag. Chet, Chupa, Tet, Teapot, or Tear in the top. And yud, like yid, small. Yeah, got it? All right, we didn't go over the mnemonics from the beginning, but hopefully you remember those as well. Aleph, no sound. Bet, with a ball or button. 
vet with the void, gimel with the glamorous heel, total glam, and the strap. Yeah, strappy hill, da <laughs> super fans, dalid, dent, right, and hey has the hole in the top. So you see already which lookalike letters are uh, already starting to present uh, some challenges. The hey and the chet from the letters that we have here, the hey and the chet would be two letters that evoke some curiosity. By the way, some fonts, the way the leg of the hey is drawn in that for the typeset. Um, you almost can't tell sometimes if it's going up to the top or not going up to the top. Right, which is like, it's hard enough to recall. Give me some give me some distinction here. Depending on literally the font that's used, some will have more gap or less gap. If it has a gap, hey, it's got the hole. It makes the sound. If it's if it's just solid, straight up and down, like boom, 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 right? The three, uh, you know, three sides. Chupa, chet. Right, think of a chup at the poles, at the top, chet. Now, the other two lookalike letters, of course, are the vav and zayin. Vav is very straight, v, right? Zayin, zigzag. One is a V sound, one is a Z sound. Y'all? Okay, let's, let's keep on moving. And remember, you have all of this. All of this is um, in your cards. These are all in the cards. Now we have another set of two letters. Okay, here we go. Cuff. And chaf, say it with me, guys. Chaf, chaf. All right, now, here's the thing. When I Remember I told you before that the dot in a letter always makes it dagesh, a little bit more powerful? So you have chaf, and you have kaf. Kaf is the stronger version. Chaf is the softer version, right? Kaf has a kaf drop. <laughs> has a kaf drop in the center. And chaf has no kaf drop. It sounds hoarse because all hoarse people sound like this. <laughs> Said no one ever who was hoarse. But all right, we're trying. So cuff has the has the dot, right? Makes a cuff cough sound, cuff, cuff, something like that. Okay, those are the two forms. Those are the two forms of letters. If you recall before. A little mystical significance. Cuff means to bend. Um, submission to God, sovereignty. Cuff also means spoon. Kaf in Hebrew means spoon. I think the the whole point of this is the ca the cuff is sorry is rounded, right? The cuff is rounded, and so a spoon is also rounded. I don't know why they had why they put a spoon with a rounded end. This is almost like Uri Geller. Was that his name? Uri Geller, the guy who used to bend spoons oh, really? until he yeah. couldn't, huh? yeah yeah <laughs> look look as i bend the spoon <laughs> through my mind and hands who was it letterman who was the one that that johnny carson yeah, left? busted him yeah anyway all right let's go out last um but one thing to note because it's very important that we have this straight right that's the whole idea here um if you look back at car two um yeah car two a two b the second car in your in your list so look back at these lookalike letters. Bet we had it before, but we don't have the slide again right now. Bet and vet and cuff and cuff, super similar, guys. Super similar. I told you before the way to differentiate is the base, the base, right? I saw the sign, and it opened. That's ace. That's ace of base. Yeah. No, right? Yes, but it goes longer on the right. You see that it goes goes longer. Think about a boat. Which boat? Right. All right. You missed the boat. The bed. So it looks a little bit longer on the bottom. It looks more like a boat. Well, in writing. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. But even the, the cup also has the dot. The main thing to remember between the bed and the vet, sorry, the bed and the cuff and the vet and the cuff, I'm getting confused now. Between the bet and the cuff and the vet and the cuff is the base. How long that goes. No worries. No worries. You're good. It's it's how long it goes. The bet, vet combo, that's the boat. That's the longer one. Cuff, cuff is the is the cuff and the cuff, <laughs> as it were. Okay. Now we are going on to the next letter.
Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I, I'm not sorry at all because the next letter is two more versions of this. If you thought you were good with Kaf and Chaf, well, let me raise you two more versions of this letter. There's a final Kaf and a final Chaf, which are used when this letter appears at the end of a word. Now, again, let me just rewind a half a second. I mentioned before, but let's do this. Let's do this like very clearly. Most letters, if you put it at the end of a word, it will be written, drawn exactly the same way. An Aleph, no matter where it is, looks like an Aleph. But, however, there's... There are five letters, and the acronym of which is Menatzapach, Mem, Nun, Tzadak, Pe, Chaf. Those five letters, when that letter is found at the end of a word, it's drawn differently. I don't know why grammatically. Kabbalah speaks about it. Like mystically, there are explanations for it. I know, I'm sure there's a simple explanation for it. I don't know the simple explanation. Too much Kabbalah study. But, but, um, when this letter chaf, or kaf or chaf, right? The kaf drop or the because I don't have a kaf drop. When that letter is at the end of a word, you basically unfurl the curve and it drops down below the line and it's anchored into the end of the word. Does that make sense? It's the anchor at the end of the word. It's a longer letter. Correct. It will make the k or the ch sound at the end of the word, which means that this same letter, it's only one letter of the 22, has four versions. Cuff, chaf, and within that, final cuff, final cuff. Four different shapes. Cuff, chaf, final cuff, final cuff. Boom. And again, I, I know I've said this before, but imagine you are, you know, putting a stake in something and saying like, okay, here's where it ends. Like, I don't know why, what context, right? That's like the final letter. It's like it's like the flagpole at the end, the word is over. Only for the for a few letters, final cuff, final cuff included. Um, so again, if you want to see the distinction between them, these are two versions of the same, same sounds, right? If you take this rounded part and just bend it down, boom, that's what you have. Um Okay. And it means the same, but this one could be any the same. Exactly. All right, which takes us to Lamed. This is going to be the last letter that we do tonight. Okay? Last letter. Last letter is the letter Lamed. Why? Because it's last. No, it's the last one for tonight. Lamed is like a lanky ladder. I will tell you, if you ever see a ladder that looks like this letter, do not get on that ladder. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. If you see a ladder... Someone's like, oh, do you mind going up the ladder to change it? No, no. You got a lanky ladder, call whatever you want. That is not a that is not a stable ladder. But lanky ladder, i.e., in the context of Lamed is the tallest letter. Uh one of the taller letters. I don't know if it's the tallest. There's a final fit. Um it is the tallest. Yeah, that makes sense. No, it doesn't make sense. I was thinking of something else of how we draw it. Um correct. Yes. Yes, final thing in hand drawing, you also go up. But no, Lamed, yes. All right, Lamed is the tallest letter. It is the lanky ladder. Or forget lanky. Or maybe don't forget lanky. It's a ladder, i.e. it's the tallest. It goes to the highest. Lamed, ladder, la sound. La, la, la. Um, if you want to picture, I don't know why this is helpful. Okay, you ready? You ready for some mashup, letter mashups? <laughs> I feel like this is sesame street. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, here we go. You want to throw it together, a chaf and a vav together? Boom. Ta-da! You have a lambda. Ah, if you squint. If you squint, not even. Not even if you squint. Not, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> not even. Not even. Except for the top, yeah, the top is like the, yeah, sure. Um, and the idea of lamed is related to the word lamed, right? Limud, to learn, to study. Make Hashem and His greatness the center point of our lives. Torah study. You know, remember that Coca-Cola slogan? It's the real thing. All right. So that is the last letter that we're going to cover today. So let's go through these letters and, um, and let's read them aloud and make sure we have them. By the way, again, these are mechanics. We are, if you know these letters already, great. 
Um, if you don't know these letters, hopefully you, you've learned them and we'll practice them. If you've learned these before, again, it's about repetition and building on it. Very soon, we're going to have to complex combos. And, it's, and it, it's, it's critical to have solid understanding of each of the letters. Let's start from the top. First letter is excellent. Good. By the way, even if you know it in your head, verbalizing it is helpful. Let's start again. Okay, now let's pause here for a second. What were the mnemonics? Aleph was silent, like the X, right? Aleph always takes on the letter of the vowel. Button, good. Vet is void, right? Vacant, good. We will never forget that one. Glamorous heel. Good. Hey, okay, because it has the hole, the hole in the top. Right, it has the hole in the top. Okay, now let's continue. All right, let's pause here for a second. What were they? What were the mnemonics? For Vav, very straight. Come on, guys, help me out here. What was it? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Zigzag. Extra Danish for you guys. No one's taking anything. All right, Zion. Uh, Zion is zigzag. Next. That is like the... Hoppa, good. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, bum, bum. Yud is like Yid. All right, next. Four, three more letters. Let's go. Cuff, right? Cuff, cuff. <laughs> next one. Cuff, good. Excellent, good. Wow. What kind of chart is this? It's only giving us one of the two. But which one is this? Final. Huff. Good, because it doesn't have the dot in it or the cough drop, the cough drop. And the final letter that we did tonight is Lamed for the lanky ladder. Good. All right. These are the things. Now, these are silly mnemonics and that the purpose is to be silly. The more, the, I don't know, silly, but the more, you know, um, I don't know, bam, bam, what the right word is. The more caricature-ish it is, the easier it is to remember. And um, these are your cards. Now, next week, let me just tell you the outline. Next week, we will finish the letters, the rest of the letters, and review all of the letters. So we have all of them down cold. When I say cold, I mean ice cold. I mean like polar seltzer, like 33 degrees, that when you drink it, it is like icing up your veins. That's the level in a good way, all in a good way. That is what we're talking about. Know the letters cold. Then lesson three is where... The action picks up in Ernest. Ernest is the guy, is the Sesame Street guy. Burton and Ernest. Um, second Sesame Street reference. Wow, what is going on tonight? What is happening? We No, I'm not, but I don't know why. It's just in my brain. Now, what in, in lesson three, we are going to start just mapping things out. We're going to start the vowels. By lesson three, if we start the vowels and the letters aren't clear, then we're in trouble. I'm not, not this is not, a, and I'm not focusing on the negative. By, we got to make sure the letters are cold, which means that when you're passing the first whatever letters we did tonight, go and go, go into the lookalike letters. Make sure that your vav is different than your vet, even though they both make the same sound. Your cuffs and your cuffs and your bets and your vets and your vavs and your zions, you got all those letters clear. Right, gazuntite, lions and tigers and bears, oy vey. So get all those letters clear, and, and you have this. Get the app. It's read, read it in Hebrew. I will show you the app on my phone, right, so that you can check, you can see what it is. Look at this. Look at this app. Are we gonna have on our app? Let's see. Uh, the app looks like the logo looks like. What is it? Yeah, it looks like the box. There you go. Now. Here, check this out. Look, look, look. First of all, the app doesn't explain it exactly the way we did, which is, but only this. Olive sounds like ah. First letter and already a difference because we said it has no sound and he goes off sounds like ah, but I guess nonetheless. Olive then you swipe, like you get to the next letter, you tap on it. Sounds like ah. 
That sounds like fa. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. If I have the app, then do I even need to come in person? And the answer is yes, because he doesn't make any bad jokes. <laughs> That's the thing. The jokes. I stay for the jokes. I stay to make the jokes. These are, this is like, all right. But anyway, here's my point. By lesson three, we are going to get into the vowel symbols. And, and I just want to show you what's, what's up ahead. Okay. Um, in lesson three, one, two, three cards in. The third card of lesson three, we're already making words. Okay. And then, and then, and then um, six cards in. Look at that. Hello. Look at this. This is like multi syllable. Uh, boom. Five, uh, seven cards in. What I'm saying is it's about, it's about to get, yeah, it's going to, it's getting, this is getting, it's going to, it's picking up steam and it's going to pick up steam very quickly, but I, I can't, have, I started this class and I'm going to end this class the same way. It's all about the repetition. It's all about the practice. Make sure you know the letters. You'll be like, oh, I know the letter. There's no, I almost know the letter. It's, it's, you know, you got to know it cold. You have seven days. And your ho your homework for this week is, is just make sure you got these letters. You got the flashcards. You get the app. You don't have to. You get the app if you want to. If it, it's it's helpful, um, drill it in yourself. There's no special rules with this. It's just knowing the letter English. You got to know a thousand rules. Here it's just letters and vowels. All right, everyone good? Yeah. All right, you guys are awesome. Round of applause for you guys. Uh, next week, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, the good news is that those of you that needed the code should have the code. If you still need the code, let me know. We'll get you the code. And um, we'll, we'll be in here. You guys know what to expect. That way we can start you know, right away. Boom, we'll, we'll get up to the races. We're going to start next week with a review. So make sure you know this because this will be this will count on your permanent record. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's no permanent record. By the way, I found out later on there was no permanent record ever for that fifth grade spelling test. Are you up for Zoom? Should we get you on Zoom next week? Absolutely. Absolutely. If not, if not, we'll have it. Um, yeah. If not, you have the cards. You'll have the thing, and 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 you. I'll send you the recording. Good. Amazing. All right. And if anybody is, is missing, otherwise, don't worry. I got you. You're good. Um, okay. Hold on to the cards. These are yours. This is mine, I guess. Yeah, 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 no problem. No problem. All right. Um, quick announcement. First of all, it was great to, to have everyone here tonight. Uh, a few upcoming things like larger events that I just want to mention. On Monday, the 21st, we, we have a Holocaust survivor coming in from Arizona. She's 95 years old. She's known as the Honey Girl of Auschwitz. She's an amazing speaker, has an incredible story. I encourage everyone to consider joining. If you're around and in town and available, join us. It's going to be um, right here in this building. Um, a powerful event, Monday, August 21st, and then Shabbat, August 25th, 26th, we have a special theme Shabbat um, called Shabbat Out of Africa with um, South African themed song, music, entertainment, food, scholars and residents. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, yes. Yeah. Friday night for sure. Saturday, I'm not sure. Yeah, Barry Herman is arranging it. This is my brother-in-law who's coming in. The cousin, yeah. He is, he's probably late 40s. And how long has he been going on the city? Year and a half. He was there for 15 years. He just left. Moved to, he's originally from London. And um, he was in South Africa for like, I don't know. Probably 25 years, maybe 20 years. Ashi. Ashi. Ashi was right before him. He trained under Ashi. You missed the whole tenure of Yuri. Yeah. Powerful stuff. All right. Neila. Uh, Neila's the end. Yeah. Oh, I um I, I will I will cut this. Um, I'm, 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 yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I always, I always edit out this stuff. Yeah. All right, great, great to see you, everybody. See you guys. I know, folks. Uh, grab a Danish to go. Uh, Ruggle, Ruggleach.
Oh, 